Welcome back to Access Replay once again. Um, I'm Josh. These are our players, Jason, Annie, Stefan from this past week, and David. Unfortunately, Nella couldn't be with us today. Um, but welcome to a uh, recorded recap of uh, the game so far. Um, unfortunately, I am going to be at PAX South this weekend, so won't be able to run one live. Um, but uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll kind of touch off on uh, on where the story's gone so far, um, some of the uh, some of the high notes for for each of you. Maybe some thoughts on uh, on where we're at right now, where we're going, and uh, and uh, yeah. So uh, story begins. If you haven't been watching, uh, our characters all uh, all roll into Duran uh, on a caravan. And they have been basically shipped out of the um, out of the Empire's uh, capital city uh, after winning a lottery, um, effectively using this as a way to expand the Empire's uh, control and influence of the continent that they currently exist on. Um, <clears throat> well, for our starting four characters, anyway. Um, Swinford is a little bit of a different story, <laughs> perhaps. Um, so Ophelia, Meowney, v, v, and uh, and Nella uh, made their way into Duran um, as uh, as something of a mystery was was uh, was brewing around the the well in the town center, and. Um, after some brief, brief questioning slash investigating, uh, the four of them dove down the well, <laughs> and one thing. of them promptly made their way back up, and Ophelia, <laughs> where Ophelia sowed untold amounts of discord running around the town. But is it, do you think that's a, a fair assessment? David? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, Meowney. V and Nella made their way into the caves that Miani located, uh, just inside or just above the surface of the water, at the bottom of the well. Um, what they ran into there were some bugs of unusual size. Yeah, <laughs> I knew I'd get a smile from you. Yep. Um, and uh, and. Some kobolds with some interesting markings. Well, some of you saw that. Um, after clearing the area out for the most part and begging the townsfolk to reopen the well that Ophelia had convinced them to seal off because of a well dragon, um, uh, the, uh, the three... Uh, uh, adventurers who were who did clear out the bot the well area made their way back up into town and kicked off quite a confrontation a very uncomfortable session I'll have to say um, with Ophelia in the town uh, that that closing scene of that second session what was it you said again Meow low friend. Meow low friend. This is what I've got. This is when I stopped being a valid. Oh, that's sweet vengeance. Oh, meow low friend. Meow low friend. Meow low friend. Meow low friend. Oh man, that was uh, that was definitely something. Getting that on a shirt. No, get it on a shirt. We're all gonna have shirts. Meow low friends. Um. So yeah, we made it through. Made it through alive, mostly. Uh, the highly uncomfortable encounters um, after your fight in the street was interrupted by uh, by some people that Ophelia had met <clears throat> while Meowney, Nella, and V until until yeah. V's. Unfortunate early exit from the game. Uh, <laughs> a forced early retirement, we might say. Um, Ophelia had made some connections in town and had planned to rendezvous by the well uh, in the night. And um, well, o 
Ophelia made that meeting because Meoni just straight up tried to tried to <laughs> assassinate her. Um, at which point you were confronted by three people who took a, a si- significant interest in Ophelia's uh, the signet that Ophelia wears around her neck. Um, that's really all that you got out of that one, though, other than the fact that Atur, one of the three, uh, an elven mage, <sighs> appears to have taken credit for the slaying of Ophelia Tanks. <laughs> At which point, you're all made aware of the fact that Ophelia's true name is Helena. And, Ophelia, and Helena has taken the identity of Ophelia Tanks. Um, after a, uh, after a, uh, a night of rest, uh, there was, uh, a brief interaction with the, uh, the mayor's administrator in the, uh, in the town center, where you were made aware of some of the things that are going on around the town. And, uh, and that was, uh, that was the end of our third session. Ophelia and Meoni. Well, David and Annie were unable to join us <laughs> for our fourth session. And uh, Ophelia Miami just needed some time to cool off. Mm. Some, some, uh, some alone time. Sharpening my claws. Uh-huh. Preparing for the next, right? <laughs> when you die like four times in one night. <laughs> it takes, a little, it takes a little something out of you, right? Uh, so that led us into our fourth session where Swinford joined Nella... And I'm so sad that Nella is not here for this because <laughs> literally the only constant is that Nella is uh, in the midst of <laughs> pretty the much chaos. everything that's going on. <laughs> for the most part. Um, Violet is actually introduced to the story during the brawl in the street. Uh, with the loss of V, um, we are introduced to uh, Violet. Yeah, the because uh, we don't know a thing about Violet yet, do we? We don't. We don't. And uh, yeah, Violet and Nella become adventuring partners and uh, are given a task by a merchant from the general store. Uh, to search out a, uh, a strange landmark north of town. And they head that way, and upon arrival, after fashioning a uh, finely crafted ghillie suit and hat, um, <laughs> uh, Violet and Nella make their way into, uh, into this um, interesting cave that has been carved out quite nicely um, and uh, where they meet Swinford. Swindle. Swindle. Poor Swinford. Um, yeah. Uh, from there, it was, uh, it was just one chaotic situation after another. How is it you worded it exactly? Uh, watch this. Um, it was more like, okay, I need you to step back. I'm about to fuck shit up. There's that. <laughs> one. There's that. One. Fuck shit up. Um, Mr. Swindle, something very bad is going to happen momentarily. <laughs> I so will stay out here. Thank you very much. I need you to prepare a spell what just in case I fuck shit up. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> I expect, I expect I as much. I can't read! In case I like, fuck shit up. In case I, I am about to fuck shit up. That is how Swinford's nightmare uh, began. <laughs> it is how Swinford's nightmare began. And oh, was it a... It was a, it was a short night, but it was a hell of a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. So we lost, uh, lost Nella to uh, Violet setting off a trap. 
in a room, of, in a suffocation room. Um, and that combined with Swinford's inability to turn a crank. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, almost lost Swinford to the, uh, to the three kobolds who were alerted by his, uh, by his shouts through the stone doorway. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Violet pretty much wrapped everything up after, after Swinford was, uh, was knocked down. Gracefully. Gracefully. Very gracefully. Most gracefully. <laughs> yes. With a uh, with a terrifying cackle. Can I repeat uh, it? What's that? Can I do it? By all means. Uh, this is for our viewers who said they had nightmares of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it every time. I'll be having those nightmares on the plane. Um, <laughs> Swinford decided he had had enough. Sat in the corner, rested a minute. Uh, Violet joined him in the rest, and then, after recovering slightly, Violet decided that it was time to perform some blood magic, <clears throat> which she did with surprising, um, surprising skill, and we don't really know what happened, but something definitely happened. Uh, at which point, Violet fled back towards town. <laughs> Swinford fled north towards the mountains, and that is where we left off at with our uh, with our fifth session. So <clears throat> now that I've kind of caught caught things up, um, from my perspective anyway, um, I would kind of like to to go around and and uh, and get your thoughts on. On things in character, out of character, uh, how your character, well, how your character is feeling about uh, about the situation. If you want to share that, any thoughts that you're having on where where certain aspects of this are going, and I think we'll actually start with uh, I think we'll start with Annie, huh? with Meowney. Um What? I know this is uh, this is kind of new to you. You haven't you haven't played mm-hmm. you have have you ever played before? Or is this your first? This is my first time. First time ever played. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with this one then. What are your personal thoughts so far on how the game goes on the on the flow of it, just on the way that the game plays? Um, I think it's a lot of fun. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's all you got. <laughs> wow. Well, wow. you're. Uh, you're I mean, a it's help. a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, and what yeah. part of it were you most apprehensive of coming into I thought into there it? was going to be a lot of things that I had to remember because mm-hmm. I think the first introduction was with Gloomhaven okay. and we were trying to play Gloomhaven and there was just a lot of stuff there so I thought D&D was going to be similar to that but it's not similar to that. Gotcha. And so it's a lot easier to absorb everything that's happening. Absolutely. Okay. Very cool. And now from a... And this is still to mm-hmm. you, from a um, from a player's perspective, um, how how easy or difficult is it for you to kind of? Well, I have thoughts on this, but how easy or difficult is it for you to kind of get into the mindset of of actually playing the character? Um, it's not that hard because mm-hmm. I'm playing a the Baxi Rogue, so it's just coming up with different places I can put Meow in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so that's, that's your that's so that's the uh, that's the role playing strategy here. Then is where can I insert Meow this time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's incredible. Thank you, friend. I can't get a Meow in there anywhere. Okay, I give up. Thank you, Annie. Mm-hmm. David. Yes. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> so Ophelia is definitely an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Um, we've really only explored. I mean, we've only get we're only four three sessions in with Ophelia, but we've actually started to explore a little bit of her story already. And I think you were kind of surprised that we had gotten into it that hard that so quickly. quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is well first? What is your experience with uh, with the game prior to this? With D and D, I played maybe two and a half campaigns. Okay. 
back in my college days. Okay, so like full through? Uh, no, actually, uh, my first campaign was with uh, Jason over there DMing. Hello. And that one kind of just fizzled out. So. Okay. And then the second one, I died and I rage quit. <laughs> so rage quitting in D and D is a thing, huh? Uh, I mean, you just I just never rolled another character. So gotcha. Okay. Okay. So um, if uh, Helena slash Ophelia dies off, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You're not gonna tell them about your next character's idea. Fair enough. Which character? Oh. oh yeah, I have a human furry lined up for my next character. Okay, that'll also say meow in every sentence. Oh, just <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, everyone. D and D was fun, guys. I'm out of here now. <laughs> no. um, okay, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. So Ophelia. Um. Ophelia hasn't really participated much with the, uh, or interacted very much with with the other players. And I find that interesting as a DM mm. because, um, so as a, as a DM, I've all, every time I've, um, I've run a session, the players, the players, uh, they instinctively like move together right. right and this is something that and this is actually there's this is kind of a point that I wanted to that I wanted to make is there's nothing wrong with it um, but I'd like for you to kind of touch on what the what the thought process was there well <laughs> the initial plan was to move as a party to start off but when I jumped off into the well yeah. and took like four damage right and then Nella jumped in after me, landed on me, and I took another two damage or so out of my eight hit points. I was at two hit points. Yeah. I was not about to go into that cave. Okay. And then I crawled out. You know, I got the potion somehow, managed to heal up. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, um, Ophelia as a character, since, I mean, my background's been uncovered a little. Mm-hmm. She's been going around towns, like, trying to make a name for Ophelia. Mm-hmm. trying to get attention from the order mm-hmm. so her plan this time was to slay the well dragon right and that way it'll you know fame follows money follows mm-hmm. but the party have to go ruin it all and frame Ophelia as the well dragon <laughs> <laughs> that's so good frame and then you know she got tied up to a pole and had to dance her way out of it and the, the, Life for Ophelia is pretty hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then she died multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Um, not necessarily died, but hey, look, grand scheme of things, there have been actual deaths. So yeah. Ophelia's, Ophelia's I mean, faring better than Ophelia's uh, doing better. Um, v she, and Nella. She figured out who killed her mother, supposedly. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So we'll move over to uh, Jason here. Um, so, I was really sad that V um, didn't make it through our first session, or our, 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 that first dungeon. Uh, I was kind of interested in exploring where you were going to go with that character. Um, but um, Violet, Violet is, is a little scary for me um, as a DM. And it's... I've never dealt with anybody that wanted to take a character in in dark directions immediately. Was that I mean was the was the whole blood ritual thing something that you were that you've been like tossing around or did that just spur of the moment, hey, Nella's dead, I'm going to do a blood ritual. <laughs> well, she's a naturally curious person mm-hmm. cuz she's kind of been recluse. Mm-hmm. So she's not kind not wise or intelligent mm-hmm. she just does it on a whim it's like oh this might be a good idea she's like lantern you know gotcha lantern as opposed to light bulb yeah i take it <laughs> i gotcha okay very cool um yeah we, we haven't really gotten to explore a lot of violet yet mm-hmm. um 
we've gotten some interesting, we've had the ability to do some interesting, uh, uh, just, I mean, again, it's early, so we've done some slight character exploration with Meowney and with Ophelia, but with Violet, um, still very much a, a wild card, an unknown. Um, and uh, uh, I think that wild card and unknown is something that we're going to be using to describe Violet going forward pretty much for the entire duration of her stay uh, in the game. Would that be an incorrect assumption? I actually like that idea because she's kind of chaotic and yeah. you, you never ex know what to expect from her. So. Yeah, yeah. That's that's absolutely uh, absolutely one part about it that's uh, that's gonna be fun. But she's not evil. She's right. chaotic neutral. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. A fine thing. distinction. Yes. So instead of uh, instead of just just straight up bloody murder, it's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna laugh at your face while you miss everything, and then you know stab you. <laughs> okay. <murder>. Okay. <laughs> Pretty neutral. Pretty, neutral. pretty neutral. If someone swings at you first, yeah, you, know, you swing back. Absolutely, I don't disagree with that at all. That's violent. So, on the uh, on the uh, the other side of that that chaos, um, we have Swinford, Swindle. 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 I guess it's Swindle. Swindle. Um. Well, first and foremost. And I know that that Ophelia or David had uh, had alluded to the fact that Jason has played D and D before, mm -hmm. um, but what is your experience with the game? You yes. Um, I tried DMing in college once mm -hmm. because my friends all wanted to play, and no one wanted to DM. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll try. But then I sucked at it because I was reading a script off like a campaign book, mm -hmm. and I was not planning ahead. So I was like, oh, this dragon flew down. And then I didn't know what else happened. <laughs> and then I tried DMing again while I was abroad in Japan. And I actually learned a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot more fun then. Excellent. Very cool. So, Stefan, uh, well, Stefan first as a player. Why don't you give us a little bit of insight about how that looks for you. I mean, I love this game. I love everything about it. Right. Um, this chaos here, this character, um, makes it all worth it, even for a character that I designed to kind of just kind of play off everybody's strengths and especially their weaknesses. Um, it's been an adventure. I've loved joining you guys so far. So, uh, I mean, my background with uh, d and I've played different variations. Uh, I've DM'd a few times. Um, don't necessarily know if I'm good at it, but you never really know. It depends on the group, I find. Yeah. Um, but I love just the, the unexpectedness. Anything written down in the book uh, doesn't necessarily happen the way you expect it to. Like uh, the well dragon that I heard so much about before <laughs> I joined. So, uh, yeah, it's an adventure. With the arms Absolutely. of my get. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> Swinford did not come into town with the caravan. Um not really something we get to explore a lot. Um, the uh, I think the extent of uh, the extent of what we touched there was that Swinford was just in the cave before the other guys got there. Mm -hmm. uh, from a well, first from you've already given us your thoughts on from a player's perspective, mm -hmm. from a character's perspective uh, towards Nella and and Violet. Don't you just what is uh, what's going through Swinford's mind at this point? So coming out of a thunderous, horrible storm, soaking wet, just trying to breathe for half a second, then in comes two insane people, one with a straw hat, another that doesn't seem to care about anything. Um, preceded by traps and murder. Um, was not what he was expecting to do on a whatever day, a Thursday, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not his usual Thursday. Um, Just like any other day. So, so currently where it stands with him heading in the opposite direction of what he considers to be a mass murderer, um, he's trying to get as much distance, 
as possible. Um, that was not what he was expecting. That was not what he had planned for. Um, He's traumatized. Traumatized <laughs> is the right word. Um, no more than would be expected after something like that, but right. he is definitely troubled and will not sleep anytime soon. And by the something, <laughs> the something like that, now are you referring to the the uh, the situation of being unconscious, or are you talking about the situation of the whole blood ritual that made the lights and the sound go out? There, there's three main factors. One, realizing that he can't even help strangers if need be with the whole pulley system. Um, and two, just kind of not being able to trust anybody. Um, and then, of course, the emotional scarring of almost dying. Um, luckily enough, he survived, so we might hear some more about him, um, which I'm really looking forward to. But all we can ever say is we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Uh, excellent, excellent. So um, <clears throat> that's, sort of, that's sort of where we sit right now. And uh, hopefully uh, those of you watching um, enjoyed this recap. Uh, if you haven't been watching up to this point, enjoyed that enough to uh, sit in with us, um, not this Sunday, but or not today, but next Sunday, uh, when we will pick the story back up. Um, and um, for those of you, uh, for those of you watching this live, um, yeah, we, we look forward to uh, look forward to uh, seeing you then. Uh, so uh, until next Sunday, uh, thanks, guys. See ya.